Welcome back to the Rena Malik MD podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today, we're going to talk about pain with sex. Sex should not hurt. Never. There is never a reason that sex should be painful. No matter how many people tell you to drink a glass of wine and just relax, we got to figure out what's going on. So today we're going to talk all about it. And for the guys who are listening, if you have a female partner and she's avoiding you, it may be because sex is painful and it's important for you to understand what could be going on so you can help her. So let's talk about how we describe pain to our doctors, because that's going to help people really understand what's going on. So have you had this pain for your entire life? Has this always been this way or has it changed? Has something new happened where the pain became more prominent? Was there a life stressor, a new partner? Have you sort of started going through perimenopause or menopause? And how bad is it? Like, is it mild, meaning you can still have sex, or is it so severe that you can't proceed with sex? And is there pain outside of sex? You may start feeling like I'm alone. Everyone talks about how great their sex life is, but I feel pain and am I alone? Well, probably not. Now, when you look at the studies, it can range anywhere from 8% of women to one in four women have pain with sex. So it's probably very underreported because oftentimes people just push through or they avoid sex or they don't want to talk about it. And so the true incidence of pain with sex is really unknown. So what I want you to do right now, or after you listen to this podcast is get a mirror. Okay. And I want you to look at your vulva and I want you to see and feel around and figure out where the pain is coming from, because this is really important. And a lot of the things we're going to talk about are going to be related to where the pain is. So let's first review the anatomy. If you look at the vulva, that is basically the space from the mons, which is the hair bearing area all the way down to the anus. And then when you go from lateral, meaning the most outside parts to the inside and check out the video, because we'll highlight the anatomy as I mention it, the outer lips from the outside going inwards, the outer lips are called a labia majora. These oftentimes don't have a lot of pain associated with them, but you can push on those areas gently with your own finger while you're looking with a mirror to see if there's pain. Then you move the next space in between the two lips is called the interlabial sulcus. So you can feel in there if there's any pain. And then you're going to go one step further, and that's where you'll see the labia minora. Now, these can be so different from person to person. Sometimes you'll see people have really long labia minora. Some have really short labia minora, and these can change over time. In fact, as you go through menopause, these labia minora resorb or shrink. So you might notice that you look different when you were younger, and now they've actually gotten smaller. And so Sometimes you may notice there's some discomfort there. Now moving one step deeper in. So we're not exactly in the vagina yet. We're in the area called the vestibule. Now this area is very hormonally sensitive. So what I tell people is if you have a little Q-tip, just gently touch that area. Look at it like a clock with the urethra or the pee hole being at the top of that clock. And you want to feel around the clock to see if touching gently with a Q-tip causes any pain because that may be a sign of hormonal deficiency and may be curative with hormones. If you only have pain at the very bottom or the six o'clock of the clock, that may be a sign that the pelvic floor muscles in that area are tense. Now, looking at the rest of the vulva before we go into the vagina, if you look above the urethra, you're going to see the clitoris. Now, right above the clitoris is the clitoral hood. Now, many of you may have not even looked there or retracted that, but it's important to see it should pull all the way back so you can see the full head of the clitoris. If you can't, or you see little keratin pearls or little white dots, Uh, or it's really stuck, it may be a sign that you have something called clitoral adhesions that can be contributing to either difficulty getting an orgasm or clitoral pain or other things like that. Now you're looking at the urethra and the vagina. 
So what you want to look at is at the urethra, you want to make sure it looks like a normal opening. There's no uh, red sort of dot there that might be look like a caruncle. That's usually a sign of hormone deficiency. It is not cancer. It is not anything concerning in terms of causing you anything really, really bad. It's just a sign of hormone deficiency, and sometimes it can cause irritation. When was the last time a doctor spent an hour with you and truly focused on your goals? And when was the last time you left feeling like you really understood what was going on with your body and had a clear plan of what was going to happen next? At my practice, Rena Malik, MD, I aim to do just that. I specialize in sexual dysfunction, bladder health, hormone health, and pelvic pain for all people. And I want to revolutionize how we take care of patients. I want to really get to know each and every one of you. That's why at my practice, when you come to see me, I'm 100% present with you for an entire hour. And after you leave, if you forgot to ask me something or need clarification on something we talked about, don't worry. I'll respond to your issues and questions quickly through our secure messaging portal without any additional costs. Just go to www.renamalikmd.com slash appointments and schedule your visit today. We see patients in Irvine and Beverly Hills, California, and virtually for patients from California, Florida, Illinois, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, and Virginia. If you aren't located in these states, consider making an educational visit where we can talk about your conditions generally, but I can't diagnose or treat you. I can't wait to see you. And I want you to look at the tissues in the vagina and see what they look like. They should look pink and somewhat moist. If they are starting to look a little bit white or discolored, and also if you see any whitish discoloration on the vulva itself, this may be a sign that you have a dermatologic condition, meaning some sort of condition that's abnormal, that's causing you uh, maybe a lot of itching or a lot of pain in that area, uh, and that needs to be investigated by a dermatologist or a gynecologist or urologist with some expertise in that particular area. The most common one is called lichen sclerosis. So Google it, see what lichen sclerosis looks like. And if it looks like that, please go see somebody because you will need treatment. It will not get better on its own. Now look at the vaginal tissues and see what they look like. Do you see any large cysts or abnormalities? Uh, You can sometimes see something like a urethral diverticulum or a cyst underneath the urethra. You might see a Bartholin's gland cyst, which would be at the bottom of the vagina on either side, like five and seven o'clock, looking at the clock again. And so those are things that can sometimes cause discomfort or, uh, or pain or pressure. And so absolutely getting those assessed is important. So now you've looked at that. Now I want you to use your own finger or a toy or a wand or something that you have at home to sort of assess what causes the pain. If you put the finger in the vagina, is the pain in the opening when you put it in? Do the muscles feel tense? They should feel like this part of your thumb. They should feel soft and relaxed. But if they feel tense, you might feel like a band, like a firm band there. That might tell you that you have a problem with the pelvic floor muscles. Now, if you don't have any pain there and you put your finger in deeper and you feel pain deeper, that could be a sign of maybe a problem like endometriosis or interstitial cystitis if you feel it when you push up where the bladder is. And so essentially this is information that one can be telling for you. And if everything feels normal, then we're going to tell you some things you could easily try at home to help with your pain. And I think it's really important that everyone understands that when you look at pain, it is not just biologic. Biologic meaning that it's a medical problem that comes from your body that's an abnormality with your body. Sometimes there's a large component of it being from a medical problem, but pain particularly around sex, can't be looked at only from a medical lens. We have to look at it from a biopsychosocial model. Now, in terms of psychological factors, we want to think about the emotions and the thoughts behind the, the problem. So 
If you have problems with sex, I tell everybody, every single person has a psychological problem associated with it because it's extremely stressful to feel like you can't participate in something that's giving everyone else so much pleasure and you're missing out, right? Or you feel like you're letting your partner down, or you just are missing something that you had before and you don't have anymore. So everyone feels stress and anxiety around that. And it's important to sort of parse out those feelings and get help for managing those feelings. A good person to see for that would be someone like a sex therapist or a psychologist with expertise in sexual health. And then when you think about the social part of the biopsychosocial, it's of course, who are your social supports? Who's around you? Um, who's in your uh, inner circle that can really help. And then also, what is culture telling us about sex? And that can vary from person to person. If you grew up in a very uh, conservative household, that may make you perceive sex very differently than if you grew up in a very progressive household. Or depending on how religious you are, other things can play a big role and they can be very unique person to person. So when we talk about pain with sex. What does that mean? So obviously it means pain with penetration that comes to mind pretty easily, but it can be pain with any sort of genital touching. And it can also be just having significant fear or anxiety about the anticipation of future genital contact. And that may or may not be preceded by a prior history of pain with sex. It can also be when those pelvic floor muscles are very, very hypertonic, causing pain or stress even before or without the evidence of genital contact. So some of these people who have something called vaginismus, where they clench down when anything tries to enter the vagina, that can include something like a tampon where they just can't because it's so uncomfortable. Let's talk about things that you can control at home. So one, it's really important to make sure that you are fully aroused. Some women can take up to 20 minutes to be fully aroused. And what happens when you get aroused? The vagina widens and lengthens and it allows it to prepare for penetration of a phallus or a toy or whatever it is, but your body prepares itself so that it can accommodate the length and width of a phallus. It also lubricates. And if you have not had enough time for arousal, it can sometimes be uncomfortable. Now, the other thing is in addition to increasing foreplay and allowing for enough time for arousal, the other important thing is lubrication. Now, a lot of people feel like we shouldn't use lube. Lube is great. I think lubricant makes everything so much more fun and so much more enjoyable. And if you add lubricant and you may not even know if you feel lubricated or not enough, your partner might be like, yeah, it looks fine to me or it feels great, but it may not be enough for you. So trying different types of lubricants to see if it helps make things more slippery, more fun, and less painful can be really important. Now, the one thing I bet you didn't know is that water-based lubricants evaporate. And those are usually the ones that are the cheapest that you can find at any drugstore. And they oftentimes evaporate. So they can cause you to have, you know, it's fine in the beginning and then it starts hurting later because it's now dried up. So using a more long-acting lubricant like silicone-based or oil-based lubricants can be helpful. So you can check out my video on YouTube where I review some lubricants and I talk more in detail about the different kinds of lubricants, but do notice that if you take a lubricant with spermicide, that can put you at risk for urinary tract infections. And if you start noticing that you're getting more yeast infections or other issues, check out what is in your lubricant. Some of the ingredients in lubricants can put a small number of people at higher risk for getting recurrent bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections. Interestingly, Recurrent yeast infections or genital infections in general are a risk factor for getting pelvic pain. And the thoughts are there's a whole bunch of different factors that go into that. So it may be that your immune response to these is not strong enough. So it creates more of an inflammatory response, or it alters your microbiome in such a way that puts you at higher risk for pain. 
Sometimes it can even be an allergic response and this can be treated with antihistamines and get better. So the other thing I want you to do is look at what medications you're taking. Sometimes the medications you're taking may actually contribute to the pain you're having. The most often medications are ones that cause what we call vulvovaginal atrophy. And this can be due to medications like tamoxifen or things that are used for chemotherapy or other things that are trying to reduce your estrogen. Another one is actually depomidroxyprogesterone, which is a long acting contraceptive, but that actually suppresses the body's own natural production of estrogen through the hypothalamic pituitary axis. Now talking about contraception, oral contraceptives can also sometimes cause pain. And the reason for this is because through their mechanism of action, they increase sex hormone binding globulin. Now, when we think about our bodies, we think very often about estrogen, but women have more testosterone in their bodies than they do estrogen. And testosterone is a hormone of desire, but when you lose estrogen, it can cause pain. Remember I talked about that area, the vestibule, that is very hormonally sensitive to testosterone or androgens, as well as the trigone of the bladder or the base of the bladder and the urethra. All these areas have receptors for androgens. What happens then, you get this increased SHBG, it's called sex hormone binding globulin, and it binds up the free testosterone that your body needs, and it can cause issues that way. Oftentimes, people will also complain of decreased desire. Also, medications that dry you out, like antihistamines um, or other anticholinergic medications can also cause vulvovaginal dryness. And there's some medications that can cause arousal, which is clitoral to mescence or getting an erection in the clitoris, which I've talked about in a video on YouTube. So check that out if you want to learn about how women get boners too. There are certain medications, specifically serotonergic agents and dopaminergic agents that can cause painful clitoral tumescence, meaning that arousal can be painful. And these can be things like citalopram, trazodone, nifazidone. It can also be these dopaminergic agents like bupropion, bromocryptine, or olanzapine. Take note of what medications you're taking. Also, if you are lactating, I think so many women don't know this, but when you are breastfeeding, your body is actually going through what we call, actually Dr. Rachel Rubin, a colleague of my term, mine, termed the genitourinary syndrome of lactation. So your body, it actually produces less estrogen. And so this, as well as going through menopause and perimenopause, can all be times when you have low estrogen. And estrogen is so important for the health of the vulvar tissues. I've talked about this in extensive detail on my video about estrogen, but basically when you have low estrogen, if your tissues become thinner and more friable and less robust, so the labia, like I said, resorb, and those are actually protective. They actually keep things sort of out of the vulva and the vagina that are, that are, you know, maybe causing irritation. And so it's really important that if you're having these issues to get that addressed, to see what ways you can improve that. So you can try moisturizers and you can use vaginal estrogens. And again, I talked about this more extensively on that podcast about estrogens. Are you loving the Rena Malik MD podcast? Well, I love each and every one of you. And I'm truly honored that you choose to spend a bit of your day or a bit of your week with me. Did you ever hear the actual story of why I started making content online? Well, when I was a resident, I remember having a patient who had bladder cancer. And in order to treat her bladder cancer, we had to remove it and then reconstruct a new bladder called an Indiana pouch. Now, with this new bladder, she would have to catheterize herself through a stoma or an opening on her abdomen in order to empty her bladder. So after surgery, immediately she did great. She went home and no major issues. But subsequently, over the next couple months, she started getting readmitted over and over again to the intensive care unit. And we were really wondering what was going on. Eventually, we figured out that she didn't truly understand that she now had to catheterize herself to empty her bladder. Just the simplest thing that was so pivotal, she didn't understand that. And it was then that I realized as a urologist, I could do the perfect surgery. But if my patient didn't understand the consequences of that surgery, then I failed as their doctor. 
And once I started practice, I realized that I couldn't teach people everything they needed to know in the 15 or 30 minutes I saw them in my office. And that's when I started creating all my Rena Malik MD content to offer free education to people around the world. And I can tell you that it has been truly one of the most rewarding experiences in my life. And in order to keep providing free content, we need your help. If you are getting value out of this podcast or my other content, I encourage you to join our premium membership. As a member, you'll get early access to the audio and video of the podcast completely ad-free, transcripts of all the episodes, and exclusive access to Ask Me Anything episodes that occur once a month. And during those episodes, I answer questions that are asked only by premium members. So join us today at renamalik.supercast.com. Can't wait to see you there. So the other thing you want to notice is when does the pain occur? Does it occur even before you have any penetration? So during foreplay, that may be a sign that anxiety and anxiety around sex is a real problem. Does it occur at the very beginning of sexual penetration? Now, this can be a variety of things, vestibulodynia or that pain around the vestibule. It can be due to other infections. So if you have a vaginal infection and uh, definitely get evaluated for that because that can cause quite a bit of pain. Does it occur with deep vaginal thrusting? And again, that can be a sign of maybe having something like uh, endometriosis or interstitial cystitis or having even pelvic inflammatory disease. Now, pelvic inflammatory disease is when things like chlamydia and gonorrhea go untreated. And the scary part is chlamydia and gonorrhea don't have symptoms. So if you are having sex with people who you're not sure have a clean bill of health in terms of sexual infections, um, and have themselves not been contracting any sexually transmitted infections, it's important for yourself to get tested because oftentimes you will see no symptoms at all. And if you avoid treating these infections, they can develop into pelvic inflammatory disease. Not only can they cause pain, but they can cause issues with fertility. I also want to know, do other things hurt? Does it hurt when you wear tight pants or sit for a long period of time? Does it hurt when you get a gynecologic exam? Because if it hurts every time, that can actually contribute to trauma. So if you find that having your first exam was really painful, that can be enough to make the rest of your sexual encounters very anxiety provoking and painful because you remember that trauma. So while we as doctors try to help you and be there for you and make it as comfortable as possible, I've definitely seen patients where this is a big part of their trauma. Also, another issue that can sometimes be related is if you have nerve issues. So if you have something like a burning sort of pain that occurs when you're sitting all the time um, and it's sort of in the sits bone, it could be a sign of something called pudendal neuralgia. And so that is when you're feeling around the, the labia, if you keep feeling all the way down to where your sits bones are and you push deep in there and you feel the pain more, that may be a sign that your nerve is inflamed. And so again, these are all sorts of different things that can help you see if you're having pain and empower yourself to find out where it is and maybe, you know, even have a better idea of what to expect. Now, what can you expect when you come to the doctor? So I tell patients, and this is my approach. I think a lot of my colleagues do something similar is we'll do as much as you feel comfortable with. We will never do anything you don't want, and we will take it as slow as you want. So you'll get a mirror and you will see everything that is happening. And I will go through all the anatomy with you. And at first I will just just gently touch things and explain what they are. And if you're comfortable with that, we then will use that Q-tip to assess the vestibule, that area I talked about that is sometimes hormonally sensitive. Then we move on to doing a pelvic exam, but that doesn't mean that I have to put that mean angry speculum in right away. We just start with one finger and I'm just going to feel the muscles. And I often tell people that if you do have muscles that are very tense, you may have pain that is quite significant tomorrow or the next day because now I've touched all these muscles and triggered them. And so this is sort of just your body's reaction to having a finger. And similarly, your body may have reactions to when a penis penetrates, right? And so we'll, we'll go that far. And then 
if you're still comfortable. And also, we may assess for other infections, like we want to do any swabs gently, we can do that or assess the vaginal pH. Those are things that, again, we do with your consent and however comfortable you feel. Lastly, when I do a pelvic exam, um, I will start with one side of the speculum. So we're not using both sides. We're just using one side and we put it in to just look at the tissues and also see if there's prolapse because sometimes there could be some sort of vaginal herniation coming down that might be causing discomfort. And so we'll assess the tissues on both the top and the bottom side of the vagina to see if there's anything obviously wrong there. And then if you still feel comfortable, we can look at the cervix if you haven't had a cervical exam recently by your gynecologist. But ultimately at any point in time, you are in charge. You can say, I don't don't want it anymore. It hurts. I don't like it. Or I'm feeling very uncomfortable. And we can come back another day and do it again or not do it. But we can work with whatever data we find to help you get better. And similarly, you're, uh, if you go to a pelvic floor physical therapist to get treated for some of these conditions, because very often you will see one because if you know, whether it's a chicken or the egg, um, you can have a condition that causes pain and then your muscles can tense up or the muscles can be tense and cause the pain. But either way, very often those go hand in hand and learning how to relax those muscles can be very helpful in improving pain. Even in that regard, some people get very anxious about the idea of having anyone do work internally. And so you don't have to do that right away. In fact, on the first visit with a pelvic floor physical therapist, they often won't do any internal work. And even if you don't ever want internal work, they can work with you with external work and hope get, get you better that way. So a good pelvic floor physical therapist will do that with you. A good doctor will assess your pain and do all those things. So bottom line is sex should never hurt. Sex should never, never, never hurt. Make sure you're fully aroused using lots of lubricant and talk to your partner if it hurts and tell them what, find out what hurts. Do some personal investigation and see what's going on so that you are empowered about knowing your own body and figuring out what's going on and then find a doctor that can help you with treating whatever condition is going on. And again, you may need a few doctors. You may need a urologist, a urogynecologist, a gynecologist. You may need a sex therapist or a psychologist. You may need a pelvic floor physical therapist. You may need a gastroenterologist if you're having bowel symptoms. So again, it really depends on what's going on with you, but please don't suffer in silence because sex should never be painful. And there should be a way for you to have pain-free sex, depending on what the condition is, what's going on, and how we can help you. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, and you want to support our podcast, a zero cost way to do so is by leaving a rating or review on your favorite podcast platform or subscribing to our channel on YouTube. We love to see you guys and we read all your comments and it helps us determine what you like, what you don't like, and what you want to see more of. And if you want to learn more from me in a variety of different formats, you can follow me on a whole host of different platforms at Rena Malik MD on YouTube, uh, X, Instagram, TikTok, all of them. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.